CBS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at that. He got it. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got a Looks chance. good. That's good to go. That's Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candleton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to semifinal week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. As always, we're at the Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Semifinal time, and uh, we have Tom O'Brien looking for his second win in a row. And he's going to be facing Jack Quinn. We're, of course, looking over the next couple of weeks to get our first guy into the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, uh, Tom was very fortunate last week. He got off to a slow start, but he came roaring back and uh, made a nice three-string total. And this week, Jack Quinn's here, and he can't afford that slow start. All right, let's give you a quick look at both of our bowlers here as we get ready for today's match. First of all, our number three seed from Natick, Massachusetts, Tom O'Brien. Tom comes in averaging 121, has a high single of 213. And a roll-off score, 686. And last week, as Dan mentioned, Tom trailed by as many as 39 pins before he came roaring back to win by 19. He defeated Mark Gregory as Tom rolled a 387 a week ago. Today, he faces our number two seed from Fremont, New Hampshire, Jack Quinn. And Jack comes in averaging 126, high single 192, and a roll-off score at 709. All right, of course, money on the line. The runner-up today will take home a consolation check of $250. The winner, of course, moves into the finals next week against our number one seed, Peter Pereira. We have $290 in the bonus ball contest later. And, of course, bonus opportunity, bonus money opportunity as well for the bowlers. We'll talk about that after we come back from our first break. And we'll get the match started, too, right after these messages. I'm pleased to report that we made another modest profit last month. Succeeding in small business is smart. Succeeding in small business is never easy. Our expenses are holding and revenues have been good. The economy seems to be coming back, and we can see it and hear it at the cash register. Now there's a health plan that can help you solve the health insurance problems of your growing business. We bought the new van, the amazing Louie. Restriped the parking lot. We finished putting a new roof on the third greenhouse. And the really good news is we also got the plan. And now we're all covered. It's now the plan of choice for small business. Our whole company is covered. Well, almost the whole company. <laughs> Health Source. We have plans for your small business. We have plans for the future. It's semi-final week, and Tom O'Brien, our number three seed, is looking for his second straight win. Last week, he knocked off number five seed Mark Gregory. Today, he goes after Jack Quinn in the number two spot. And as I said, the winner today moves into the finals next Sunday at 12 noon against Peter Pereira. Tom O'Brien to kick off this match after his 387 a week ago. But the real story, as we mentioned earlier, Dan, uh, just about halfway through that match last week, in fact, exactly halfway through the match, Tom trailed by 39 pins, and he came back to win it by 19, a 58-pin turnaround. And it's an opening nine box for Tom. No help there, but he does have the three and the six for a spare leave. There it is. If you've uh, missed us the first two weeks of the new season, where have you been? Glad to have you back. And uh, if you've missed the first two weeks, you know you might not know that we have uh, cash bonus money now available to both bowlers. Three marks in a row, spares or strikes. Any combination is worth $25. $25 for each additional consecutive strike, or a consecutive mark, I should say. Three strikes in a row is worth $250. And Jack Quinn 
has an opportunity for a spare in his first box. The bonus money comes to us through the courtesy of our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Jack Quinn on the spare. He's right in the pocket again. Eight fill this time, four and eight. Trying to make it two in a row and set himself up for some of that bonus money. Nope. Nine it is. 27 opening pair for Jack. Tom O'Brien working on a spare now. Little heavy on the head pin, leaves himself a three, six, four, seven. Just six on the spare, but a difficult one if he's gonna make it two in a row. Trying to split the three and a six. Not quite enough on that wood. And the 10. Every Sunday at 12 noon, Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. But we hope you've been joining us on Saturdays at noon here on the Winds for Candlepin Skins. One, two, four for Tom and missing the head pin. And good opportunity there for a spare. It goes by the board, gets it for a 10. 45 through four. Jack Quinn with a 7.09 in the roll-off, finishing second. Oh, big first ball again. He kicks out a couple extras and leaves the kingpin. Is there a bowler in the game that is any smoother than Jack Quinn? I don't know. You don't even hear his ball hit the lane. Oh. <laughs> that, that time you did. Yeah, that time you did. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> kind of builds you up. And Got the spare, though. <laughs> well, that's why. He was, you know, had to play it high in the wood. <laughs> that's what I mean. Seven, and will he carry the five? No. Just a little full that time, it seemed. Jack from Fremont, New Hampshire. He and his wife, Cheryl, have uh, a daughter, Joni, and a son, Nathan. Jack works at the Lafayette Lanes. Nope, not enough of an angle on that shot. And 54, and a nine pin advantage early in the match. all over the Brooklyn pocket for the left-hander. Not an easy spare leave with the five and the eight. Because of the wood in between, it's gonna throw the five pin to the right sidewall. That's the way to do it. Go, it. Almost go by the five, catch the wood, turn the wood in between the two pins for the spare. Two marks for each bowler, here it is. Again, crossing over, and he's got the reverse of the leave Jack Quinn just had a moment ago. Let's see if the wood helps. Not enough. You know, Tom gets on the board with his second mark, putting up that spare in the fifth. Jack Quinn, who already has two. Uh, 
possibilities with the wood sliding in behind the head pin. Uh, yes, sir. Enough. Three times in a row, Jack has spared on lane 32. He has yet to solve lane 31. That's where he'll go now. To fill that spare. And he does with a strike. <laughs> Jack brings some followers with him and a quiet bunch of people. Tom might have gotten a little break there with that piece of wood spinning out to the front. Put things in motion. And yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Certain gave him a little more room for error there with hitting the head pin, got an extra piece of wood to do some damage for him. And the result is another spare. Tom quickly to work. Fills it with six. Seven through eight. Jack Quinn now working on a strike and looking for bonus money here. Off target to the left. Probably would have loved to like to have that one stayed up, stay up, but still it's got to have the head pin. The wood might do the damage for him. Yes, yes, sir. $25 in bonus money for Jack Quinn from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Well-deserved $25 bonus. Great shot. He'll get another $25 if he can mark here again in the eighth. And he'll have a shot at it. Ooh, well, no. watch out now, though. Well, if the wood stays in there, he'll be all right. But that kind of ruined his shot. He had the, the triangle up. Two, four, five, and then the two pin fell down, but let's see. That piece of wood in the front is way out in front of the two pins. Yeah. It's a lot farther out than it appears on screen. Ideally, I'd like to get by the front piece, hit the five, but he's gonna oh, he's gonna go high in it. You know? Takes it out of there. Played it up high and used both pieces. Down by 25. He's got him right where he wants him. <laughs> That's what happened last week. Fell behind. He came roaring back, but can't count on that happening every week. One oh four now through nine. center two four six well last week Tom started out with a 102 this week he's gonna start with a 113 and he will again be trailing Jack Quinn is already a 122 plus a ball in the eighth Still got his bonus streak going. He's gonna have to work a little bit for this one, the five and seven. Two pieces of wood behind the five. Do I have that seven pin and clip the wood? Let's see. No, he's going after the five. He's and got he's, it. Oh, he's got it, he's right. 25 more. Five marks in a row for Jack Quinn. Already at 140 in the ninth, plus the bonus ball. Well, this one's going to be a little tougher. Well, I could 
got a feeling he's going to make it. No, too far left. But he will have a big lead after one game. It's a nine, a 156, and a 43-pin lead for Jack Quinn after one game. He also picked up $75 in bonus money, and we'll be back for game two in a minute. So, you believe it's not worth playing Tri-State Megabucks unless the jackpot is really up there. Well, let's just suppose that this week's jackpot is only 1.3 million. Now, if you were to win, you would receive a check for $65,000 every year for 20 years. Well, before taxes. 65,000. It's not enough to get you to play? Are you kidding? Well, then here, sign it over to me. Tri-State Megabucks. There's no such thing as a small jackpot. Last chance. Spooky Room. It's America's horror theme park. Every October night, take a spooky hayride through acres of haunted terrain. Enter, if you dare, the high-tech wizardry of Spooky World's bone-chilling haunted house and journey through Spooky World's all-new American Horror Museum. Come face-to-face -face with the most frightening creatures this side of Transylvania. This week, meet actress Linda Blair and the heavyweights of horror Jason Leatherface, Pinhead, and more. Call 508-838-0200. It's America's horror theme park. Spooky World. I've got to. I've never run from anybody before. If I'm a man, I must be brave. And I must face that deadly killer. A liar coward. High noon. Today at one on Movie Watch. Whoopi Goldberg is just trying to make a living. What line of work are you in? I'm a cat burglar. Till she stumbles on a cache of cash. Hey, what's happening, man? And lands face to face in a messy murder. I'm going to be ill soon. Suddenly, she's got quite a following. Shoot her! I'm not going to shoot her! It's a comedy conspiracy. That's my partner. <laughs> burglar. 10 night at 8 on Movie Watch. Before we get back to the match, a quick reminder about our bonus ball contest because it could be a very valuable reminder these days. Our highest ever jackpot right now at $290. Be sure and send regular size postcards only if you'd like to enter. Be sure and include your name, your full address, and the number from 1 to 10, the number of pins that you think will drop on the ball thrown by our winning bowler at the end of the show, the bonus ball. Send those cards into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And good luck. We're going to have a big winner one of these weeks. Jack Quinn, the big winner in that first game of the match. 156. 1, 3, and 7. He's going to start with this game and pick himself up, uh, what, $75 in bonus money, too. Oh, how did the seven pins stay up? The winner of this match, of course, comes back next week for a chance at the $1,000 first place prize money and also the automatic qualification into the Tournament of Champions. And it'll be a nine box for Jack. That's only his fourth open box of this match so far. Here's how it happened. Watch the head pin. Actually came <laughs> forward a little bit. <laughs> nice, smooth delivery, and Jack Quinn has a strike. His second. You see the ball coming into the one-two pocket, the five and eight pins, the final two to go, and it's another strike for Jack Quinn. Tom O'Brien shooting at 1-2-10. Oh, fine shot. Spare in the first.
Very gotta, nicely done. Got to make you feel good to make a shot like that. First box of a game. Oh, right through the middle. Wait a minute, it's coming back. No possibilities now. So, you know, there's a good reason not to turn you back on the pins. <laughs> because not only does he not sure where the wood's lying down. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess maybe he was watching. I don't know. Look, look at Tom. He knows <laughs> he got help on that one from somewhere. <laughs> wow. Finish my thought. Sometimes you want to know if the pin comes back and is frozen against a pin or two rather than an inch or two away. It makes all the difference in the world trying to play your shot. That's eight fill on the strike for Jack. And the 10. Well, maybe that's enough to get Tom O'Brien going. He made a great shot in the first frame, and the second frame, uh, well, Let's say you got a little lucky. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. No. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> the four and ten pins after a ball like that in a one-three pocket. Wow. Again, he went for it. It'll be an eight box. Oh, a chance for Tom O'Brien to make up some more ground here. Off target that time, but manages to carry an extra pin. Head pin is up and plus the six, nine, ten, the triangle in the right hand corner. Piece of wood out in front of that triangle. First and foremost, he's got to have the head pin. Oh, yes. $25 in bonus money for Tom O'Brien. And Emmett Horgan is writing checks over there at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Yeah, you look at that second spare, and he kind of robbed him of the $25, <laughs> but we'll give it to him. Well, well there's the payback okay. right there. See? <laughs> Sometimes you miss them and get them, and other times you think you hit them and don't get them. Six, seven, ten. Piece of wood in front of the six and ten. Oh my! Got the got the tough one, which we think would be the seven pin. Left the ten. Got to have a loose ball cleared out of there, and Tom has made up some ground here in the first four boxes of this second game. The lead was 43 coming in. Right now it's down to 30, and Tom has a chance to Let's see what catch another pin here. Watch to snap the wood. Gets the six pin. No, we're back to the shot now, and Tom misfires, and he'll take the nine, so it's 58 through four, and the lead is 30 right now for Jack Quinn. Long way to go still here on Stars and Strikes. Semi-final week, we'll be back. Everyone at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Who last appeared here in... who last appeared here in singles back in March. Jack came close to qualifying for the Tournament of Champions back in March. He won a semifinal match, one of the best matches we've had in years here, over Tim Lipke. A long time before we forget that one. Uh, we re-ran that one during the summer, too. Hope you had a chance to see it. 425 to 423 and then Jack came back the following week and gave Paul Berger a run before finally losing 406 to 367 and Jack quickly puts up strike on spare no doubt about this one just a matter of how long it took for the 10 pins to fall making full advantage taking full advantage of that spare with a strike on it look out for Tom uh -huh. He wanted that head pin up, but 7-10, let's see where the wood settles down. Might have a shot after all.
Yes. Very nice. Perfectly done. He's low enough to have the ball drive straight through for the seven pin and the would take the ten. Seven marks for Tom O'Brien, all spares. Oh, and he keeps pace with, oh, I thought he was going to have a strike himself. Nine pin drop. And you heard Tom, uh-oh. He, referring to the three pieces of wood out in front of the seven pin, and two of them are resting against the sidewall. Boy, he just had enough yeah. on that to drive it all back. Tom throws a pretty hard ball, and he needed all of it that time. Two in a row and eight marks for Tom O'Brien. Lead is cut to 12. Jack working on a strike. Tom on a spare when he gets back up. Sorry, he leads by 12 this game, 31. He's still trailing by 31. For a spare and $25. Yes. Jack Quinn now with $100 in bonus money. Right in there again. Look at that. Solid nine pin drop. Five pin stands up. Two pieces of wood, one in each gutter. And the, the other seven pins are nowhere to be found. Oh, mark wow. it down. Mark 20, it down. 25 more. Jack Quinn is just in a groove right now. He had five in a row in the first game. He's got four in a row now. And Tom O'Brien, strike on spare. And 25 for Tom. It's twice this game he's picked up the $25 bonus. There's a strike. These guys keep this up. They'll have enough money to buy a car at Rockingham say, Toyota Dodge <laughs> Nissan. I was going to say, they just traded for the car instead. <laughs> Oh, boy. Nope, on the four horsemen. You know, Tom had been doing a good job mark for mark with Jack Quinn, but he's open here in the eighth. Ten box, 126 through eight. Jack Quinn already with the 114 plus a ball. He's got four marks in a row, so obviously $25 more if he can mark here in the ninth. Light hit that time, and he's going to have to work a little. Two, four, and ten, and let's see where the wood settles down. Uh, I think he's better off having it to roll away because it doesn't have a good angle. Try to split it or catch catch a piece of the wood and see what happens. I wouldn't bet against him. No. Nope. One twenty nine through nine already at uh, two eighty five. Right through the center that time. It's a little more interesting now than it was to start, but still going to be a heck of a shot. Oh, he's going to go after the two pin, obviously, with the wood behind it and in, to the left of it. And make the shot? Almost. Mm. Good, good effort. It's off to a terrific three game total. Nine, one thirty-eight, and two ninety-four after two. The good news for Tom O'Brien is that he's got a couple of open frames to work on here. Yeah, if you put a couple marks here, the lead's going to get down where it's going to be anybody's ball game. Well, let's see. The two, seven, and ten, and the piece of wood. 
next to the two pin and also one in between the two and the ten. Wow. Can gain a couple in count with this one. I'll make it one. The lead is now 37 for Jackie Quinn. Tom O'Brien in the 10th. Coming up just short of the head pin. Let's see what happens here in the back row. How about that? Break there. The one and the three left for Tom. Yes. Spare in the 10th. 145 plus a ball. Oh my, tough break for Tom, just four, 149. And a two game total of 262, so he gains some ground. The lead is now 32 for Jack Quinn. One game to go, and we'll have it right after we have these words. Winter is coming soon to beat those cold nights and high heating bills. Have a question about bowling or our telecasts here on the winds? Please drop us a line to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Please drop us a line to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, WNDS TV 50, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Again, a reminder that we do not get a chance to answer all the mail, but uh, we do try and uh, get to some of it as best we can here on the air, and we appreciate your interest and writing in. Get a lot of mail over the summer. Third game, semifinal week. Tom O'Brien. Everything but the five pin. As, as was the case last week, Tom has to start fast. As the spare. Mixing pretty well here on the fill. Make it seven. Tom with $50 in bonus money already. Jack Quinn with $125 in bonus money. For two in a row. Yes. Had to wait. <laughs> had to wait. Tom's had a couple of those where he's had to wait. That's what he has to do is to start quickly, and he does put two marks up, trailing by 32 with one game to go. Jack Quinn already has 12 marks. He's looking at the 2-4-5 triangle, but the 10 pin is also up. And, oh! And now it's gone. No problem. Great you know, shot. He made that look almost easy. <laughs> Cut the two on the left-hand side. Watch the five. Off the five pin. Right over into the 10. A little heavy that time on the head pin, but let's see. It's going to be eight, which is the good news. <laughs> the bad news is it's a 7-10 left, but three pieces of wood, and I think he's going to play the one nearest to him on the right-hand edge and catch the other two, and he might have a shot. Wow. And then again, he might miss both of them and try for a nine box. <laughs> I thought he actually had a shot of making that. I agreed with you. I thought he did, too. <laughs> Nine it is. So, here's an early opportunity for Tom O'Brien. Now yeah, he'll cut into the lead with this ball.
plus he's a chance for bonus money. Heavy, oh boy. The one, five, and eight. Sprayed eagle plus the nine pin left. Disappointing three, but now the spare leave is a most difficult one. Just six. Well, he's got to go one box at a time. Got to forget about that one. Come right back with a mark. It's a good nine pin drop, just the six. Yep. Spare and a fourth. Three out of four boxes. Marks. Quinn missing the head pin for one of the rare times today. Yeah, leaves himself the four horsemen to the right. One, three, six, ten. No wood to speak of. That's going to affect the shot. And so many times you see it. One, three, six, clear out of there, but you'll leave the ten. Thirty-three the lead in the match, but Jack is opposite that spare. Three and a six. Nope. So once again, Tom will have an opportunity to cut into the lead with his spare fill. He is uh, not out of it by any means. He will roll that bonus ball to cut into Jack Quinn's lead. Six boxes to go here on Stars and Strikes. Stick around. The responsibility of every candidate for public office is to say what he stands for, to do what he believes, and to have the courage to take the consequences. That's what representation is all about. I'm Carol Hochmeyer, constituent of Dick Sweats, and the only survivor of the assault which took place at the Newbury Town Hall last November. I wouldn't be here today if the assault weapon used by our attacker hadn't jammed. I'm grateful to Dick Sweat for his vote to ban semi-automatic weapons. I think that vote took a lot of courage. Even though I'm a Republican, Dick Sweat has my support for doing the right thing, even though he knew he'd be under attack for doing it. With Dick in public life, I've... ...exact same position he was in two boxes ago. Whatever he throws on this spare will... throws on this spare will cut into the lead and again right through the middle this time just five well, he's hitting the object pin on those spares but just full well, Tom's trying to make something happen so he had to go for the high risk shot Just 58 with benefit of three marks. Fills of seven, three, and five in this game. But even more important, he's left uh, seven pins standing. So he will be open for two. And Jack Quinn, who leads by 27, will step up with a chance to add to it. The winner to meet Peter Pereira in the championship match next week. For $1,000 and the first spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Tri-State Megabucks, the presenting sponsor of Hannah Stars and Strikes. Just imagine, give it a try.
Tri-State Megabucks. Jack Quinn answers the re answers the challenge with a strike. His fourth of the day. <laughs> that brought a smile to Jack's face. <laughs> he pulled that ball badly to the left. But he comes right back. Oh, no yes. problem. Oh, two pieces of wood oh. hit at the same time <laughs> and kept it from falling. Well, the lead is now 40 with four boxes to go. And Tom has got to be thinking strikes. Or at least marks. The interesting thing is that Tom only has one less mark than Jack does. Tom has 13, Jack has 14. The difference is that Jack has really strung them together with big fills. And he's had several strikes, and Tom misses the single. Seventy-six through seven. Time running short now. Don't forget, we'll be back next weekend with candle pin skins on Saturday at noon in our championship match of this series next Sunday at noon here on the winds of New England. Well, I guess we'll have to ask Tom after that, after the match, if he intended to do that. Trying to play the wood. Instead, it's a nine box. Jack Quinn. Three and four. Ooh, he was playing for the carom and it didn't happen. Eighty-four. That clicks another box off the scoreboard though. Sudden, both bowlers in a little bit of a drought here. Jack Quinn in command with just two boxes to go. He leads by 41. Don't forget, coming up in just a few minutes, $200, uh, $290 in our bonus ball contest. If you've got a postcard in our big barrel, you'll want to stay tuned. You may win some cash. I think those two low fills on those last two spares really took a lot of wind out of I Tom O'Brien. So. Yeah. Yeah, his opportunity early in the match to really put a little bit of pressure on him just uh, never really materialized. So it's set up next week. Pete Pereira and Jack Quinn for all the marbles. And a few bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than a few. <laughs> well, Tom finishes with a 104 and a 366. He'll take home a, a check for $250 and also an extra 50 in bonus money. Quinn has cooled off here a little bit in the third game, but he was terrific in the first two, 294 after two. 
He had 12 marks in his first 18 boxes. Build up that big lead. And now he can look ahead to next week's championship match against Peter Pereira. One more time? No. Mm -hmm. 400 series for Jack, though. First one of the season. 112 and a 406. A 40 pin victory for Jack Quinn. He moves into the finals, and we will move into a break when we come back. The bonus ball contest. Everyone at Rockingham Toyota Dodge. Semi-final week in the books, and a big win for Jack Quinn, who got off to the quick start, and this time uh, Tom O'Brien was... Jack Quinn, who got off to the quick start, and this time uh, Tom O'Brien was not able to come from behind. No, I had his chances that third game, but just couldn't put it together, and uh, you, you just can't go into one game 40 pins behind Jack. The final 406 to 366. Let's talk to both bowlers. First of all, Tom O'Brien, a big hand for him, who got the win last week, and... Uh, a little bit short this time, but we do have a little consolation prize here for you. We have $250, and you picked up uh, an extra 100 in bonus money while you were here as well. Congratulations. Jack Jack threw a good total at you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jack is... Uh, oof, Jack's been around a long time. <laughs> you don't... My problem is I didn't get out of the uh, gate early. Right. Last two weeks, I've been struggling. Then I come back in the second, but Jack matched me. And that was that was a ball game right there. You don't give anybody like Mark Gregory, Jack Quinn, Peter Pereira, so forth, down the line a big lead like that because it's hard to come back. Well, it's been a little while uh, since we've seen you on singles. Come back and see us again soon, all right? Uh, could be three months or so. And I'd just like to say I wanted to dedicate last week's win to uh, Sean Cullen, who was the 11-year-old killed in Lowell in the boating accident. I had an opportunity to meet Sean about three years ago up here in the league. And uh, I want to send my condolences out to the family. Along, I'll speak for the rest of the pro bowlers and uh, send out the condolences among the rest in Park Place. Uh, we'd certainly like to add our condolences to the Cullen family as well. And while we have you here, Tom, while we have a second, uh, tell us a little bit at least. I know you're still kind of in the early stages of it, but the, uh, the uh, special benefit tournament that you're working on. Uh, yeah, I got a letter sent in the mail to me from a uh, public relations representative at St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which is located in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, what I'd like to do is, I'm in the early stages right now, I'm going to be looking for sponsors, so if anybody out in the New Hampshire area would mm -hmm. like to donate money or checks, uh, you can send it to care of Tom O'Brien, Park Place Lanes, <laughs> in uh, Wyndham, New Hampshire. I don't know the zip because I don't live up here. Um, basically what it is, is I'm trying to get a Massachusetts uh, benefit and a New Hampshire benefit and get some companies to donate $100 or $500 or so forth, or even public, to donate 5 or $10. And I'm going to get a bunch of uh, professional bowlers bowling in it, along with the public. And hopefully I can get a couple of uh, stars out there as far as other sports mm -hmm. such as so forth. Well, keep us posted, and we'll uh, certainly do our best to inform people about it. Oh, Thanks thank very much, very Tom. Much. All right. Thank Congratulations. You. And now Jack Quinn for the bonus ball. $290. But we got to have a match to give the money away. <laughs> Include us in the stars list, did he? Well, he, he'll we're, ask we're us. Done. He'll ask us, though. I'm sure he'll ask us. There's a seven. Let's see if it's a winner. $290 draw here. It is a winner. Arthur Pantelides from Summersworth, New Hampshire. Guest is seven. And so, Arthur Pantelides from Summersworth, you've won $290. You've also won a brand new set of bowling balls, as has Jack Quinn, 406. Nice oh, job. Oh, it was nice getting out of the gate early. <laughs> Tom struggled. And <laughs> well, how about next week? Uh, you got Mr. Pereira coming in. Oh, he's a good bowler. He's very good. I, I know. bowl against him all the time, and he always gives me a run. <laughs> well, I know this is old hat for you, though, because last, last spring you were here uh, in a championship match. You took a shot at Paul Berger. Yeah. So you're back with another shot at it. Yeah, well, maybe better this time. Yeah. All right, well, good luck, Jack. We'll see you next week Thank for the you. championship. All right, Jack Quinn with the big 406 to defeat Tom O'Brien. And uh, next week against Peter Pereira. And now we get to empty out our big bin and collect some more postcards. Well, that's what we bring the crowd for. Let's see if they'll help us. <laughs> this is full. We need some help. All right, next week we will have uh, our championship match Sunday at noon. It'll be Jack Quinn against Peter Pereira. Don't forget, Saturday at noon, skins, candlepin skins from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Until Saturday, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.
Cafe Bowling fans, do not forsake us. That classic western High Noon is next. And then after Gary Cooper, it's James Garner in The New Maverick. The Movie Watch Sunday double feature is next on WNDS.